Hi everybody, and welcome to a So What Happens Next. My name is Thomas. I'm Amber. And I'm Patrick. And this week the three of us are traveling far east to the land of Japan as we go see the classic film by Akira Kurosawa, Ran. <laughs> So, as I said, we are doing Akira Kurosawa's Ran, came out in 1985, is loosely based on the Shakespeare play King Lear. But before we get too much into the plot, Patrick, what are your first thoughts on this? See, just going off the title and seeing just a, a picture of the maybe cover or poster, mm -hmm. it seems to be about probably an old samurai of some sort who... Maybe went after someone high up, emperor or king or something like that, and now it's disgrace and has to run away and hide, which they wouldn't do. But, you know, something along those lines. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and say you're not even close. Okay. Yeah, that's really not even close, but nice try. Just to get a little <laughs> bit out of the way, Ran or Ran is actually the Japanese word for revolt or chaos. So this okay. movie is a Japanese language movie. You're going to have to deal with the subtitles, which I think this movie gets you into it enough to where you kind of stop paying attention to it. But this movie begins with a uh, boar hunt, actually, yeah. if I'm not wrong. You have these beautiful shots of the Japanese landscape, and you have just people on horses, and they're chasing a few boars. Okay. Um, they're hunting them. It appears to take place kind of in that period you're living in right now with the, with samurai. the samurai. Okay. Uh, you know, these guys are hunting. This is the credit sequence. They're hunting this boar. They hunt this boar, and you have this elderly fellow dressed in white. What you find out are his three sons dressed in yellow, red, and blue, and then some other, like, feudal lords that okay. are sitting with them, and they're drinking to uh, take it down this boar. Basically, it then goes into the two lords are trying to... You, you get... You, trying to form an alliance. Right. You find out that... The elderly fellow is actually this very powerful and accomplished warlord who has recently completely taken over this entire region of Japan. Okay. He runs it. Everyone's like, this is the guy. We don't fuck with him. He is, he'll destroy us. And these two lords are trying, like Amber said, to compete for his last unmarried son to marry one of their daughters. All right. As they're doing this, uh, they're just kind of, Asking, who are you going to pick? Who are you going to pick? You get this light entertainment by this clown character who continues on through the whole movie. The uh, high king, the, sh the the warlord, named Ichimonji. Oh, Ichimonji. Lord Ichimonji falls asleep. And everyone's like, oh shit. Uh, okay, like let's get out of here. Which is right after the son dressed in blue, the youngest unmarried one. Mm -hmm takes some stab at a the clown, makes fun of the clown, okay. and everyone's embarrassed, and they're just like, can we cut this out? Because it's a bad joke? Or... Yeah, he, oh, okay. he makes some bad joke. Well, um, it's a joke about the two uh, lords that are mm, with them, mm -hmm. and it's considered, um, what's the word? Disgraceful? Yeah, like insulting. Yeah, or it's un, it's yeah, embarrassing. Insulting, they yeah. make a, the middle brother in red makes a point to say, well, you know, the only reason Father fell asleep is because he's faking it. And he could, how else are you going to get out of that? And as they all start to walk away, the blue son decides to cut a branch and, like, put it over... They're sitting out in a field okay. while they're doing this. And he puts the branch next to his father, so it gives him some shade while he sleeps. Everyone's hanging out, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the dad just bursts out of this walled area, this tent, tented area. And he's freaking out. He looks like he saw a fucking ghost. And everyone's like, dude, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? And he's like, I had this nightmare, this horrible nightmare. I was alone in the world. And then my three sons 
brought me back from the dark. And this scene is so... I don't know if you picked up on this when we watched it. It was so weird because he's like, my my, my wonderful son Taro, the oldest one, my wonderful son Jiro, the youngest, the middle one, and my great son Saburo, the youngest one. And Saburo has this reaction when he goes to touch his face where he like jumps back. He's like, what the fuck are you doing loving us right now? You never love us. Like, what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> like, um, and everyone's like, yeah, you know what? He's right. You never really showed affection to us. What's wrong with you? And so Ichimanji goes, all right, everybody, I wasn't going to do this, but round everyone up, let's have a chat. So they get all the lords together. And he goes, all right, I'm retiring. I've been doing this for 70 years. I, like, this whole land was covered in blood. I went and fought, took every castle. I control everything. We're living in this pretty dope-ass peacetime. So I'm retiring. I'm like 70 years old. I'm fucking done. I'm given the power to my eldest son, Taro, guy dressed in yellow. Mm -hmm. But I am still the high king guy. I still retain all the titles and lands. Everything's still mine. But Taro here is going to make the choices. And everyone's like... Are you sure you want to do this? Uh, maybe we shouldn't do this. And he Obviously goes, well, hold not on. happy with the decision. Yeah, they're not happy with the decision. Right. He gives these two other ma minor castles to Jiro, the other son, and he says, I'll give Sa Saburo this third castle, which is just called Third Castle. Saburo's like, you're being a fucking moron. If you do this, you're just assuming that everyone's going to be cool with you retiring. Yeah, like we're just going to support Taro, you know, right. and just hold everything up, which is not what's going to happen. Right, and you're just like... Thinking that everyone's going to be cool with that? Dude, it's not going to work. You shouldn't be doing this. And they get in a fight. What happens after they fight? They're not like fighting. They're just oh, yelling at each other. Verbal argument? Verbal, verbal argument. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the old man's like, this is what it's going to be. Follow it. Yeah. And then they're like, no. And they go back and forth like that mm -hmm. argument. And then one of the sons has to stab the old man or something along those lines. Oh, man. Oh. That would... <laughs> Ooh, this would giddy up something fierce if that happened. It would. To, and then we wouldn't really have a movie, so. <laughs> yeah, as you'll well, see, that the, that crime, changes. It'll it. be the fight for power between the three sons if they killed off the father. Mm, that's and that'd true. be the rest of the movie, but I guess by your reactions, that does not happen. <laughs> um, no, not quite. So, the youngest son, Blue, he's, you know, they yell like you said, and he says, "Fine, you don't like this shit, you're banished. Get out." You are not welcome here. And everyone's like, whoa, 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 maybe that's a little drastic. And one guy named Tango, he gets up and he's like, you can't do this. And he's very adamantly like, do not do this. And he goes, you don't like it? Get the fuck out too. So okay. he kicks them both out. They're banished or whatever, and everyone else just kind of goes on with their shit. And then this is where he goes to live with his first son. Or attempts to live with his first son. Well, first, you get... One of those lords catches up to Sabro and Tango, who are just kind of like, we don't know what's going on, whatever, we'll just figure shit out. And he goes, hey, that other lord, he doesn't want you marrying his daughter anymore. I thought about it. I liked how you stood up to your dad back there. If you want to come live with me, that's okay by me. So T Sabro's like, all right. Like, I'll go marry your daughter and live in your castle. It's like kind of a net and zero here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tango, though, is like, I have to go protect the king. I can't. Even if I have to wear a disguise, I got to do it. So is he like the comedic character of the film? Cause it's... No. No, no. He's, he's like, he's a straight man to the comedic yeah. character. Comedic character is the clown guy. He continues on. You got to think like a Shakespeare deal here. So it's like you have this clown that kind of facilitate what the audience is yeah. supposed to feel like. So, yeah, the, he leaves. Tango is like... I'm going to go my separate way. We're doing this. Now you get what Amber was talking about, where the king the king had told all of his sons, oh, yeah, you know, I'll live in one of the outlying castles, but I'll visit you guys whenever I feel like I want right. to. So he's hanging out at... Yellow. Yellow's right. castle. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're catching on. <laughs> well, no, that's... Amber said that earlier. Tarles, yeah, Yellow's castle, yellow, yeah. yeah. Um, he's hanging out at Yellow's castle, and he sees all his concubine wives having to stop everything they're doing to let Taro's wife, Yellow's wife, the theoretical new queen, and her group walk by. And so this is where you start getting dad, where he's kind of like, 
I'm the fucking king. And everyone's like, well, I mean, are you? Because you gave all your power away, like... Yeah, exactly. Like, he gave all his power away, he has the titles, and he's, like, bitching, he's like, oh, these people aren't listening to me because I'm still the fucking king, but I'm kind of not. How do you think he resolves this anger issue? Bitch slaps his son. Oh. I wish. That would be nice. (laughs) Goes to live with the second son? Not quite. No, the second son's at his house. He's not there right now. He tries to talk to his son. Yeah, he tries to talk to his son, and his son's kind of like, nah. Whatever, like, dads, I'm going to do what I want. So Not so, like, damning like that, but very like, oh, I guess maybe, like, I'll, I'll make sure I talk to her about it. And then you get introduced to Taro's eyebrow browless wife, <laughs> who is like Cersei Lannister dialed to 11. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, she's like, she's going hard trying to corrupt yellow into like just kind of taking over and she's sitting here like oh so you're just a shadow of your dad huh like i got you you suck and so she convinces yeah she has a lot of like backhanded comments and this was like i was like oh my goodness like she's really good because she'll say things like oh like I guess it like he's like oh I have everything you know and she was like so you think and then just like walks away and I'm like damn like (laughs) (laughs) but that sentiment exactly she does this the whole time okay so she convinces him to uh, have a party where they invite the king but they only invite the king and his like uh, vizier okay so after that there's this conflict between so the father, he has his little army or brigade or whatever you want to yeah, call it right. that follow him, follow him everywhere. Gotcha. And so does the son. And so what happens is the son, because of his discussion with his wife, where she's just like, oh, so you think you're in charge, but you still don't have his banner because mm-hmm. the father has a banner. It's like a sun or something like, like in the yeah, shape of the sun. Each one of them has yeah, a sun each one. and then a moon and then a half moon and like yeah. a crescent moon. Gotcha. And so... He's plotting to have his men take the banner. And so they get into a large scuffle and they're trying to, you know, take the banner away from um, the father's guys. And the clown is making fun of them. Yes, the clown is making fun of them. And here comes another guy, um, one of Taro's guys, ready to kill the clown, basically, right? Yeah, he's pissed, yeah. and he's like, I'm going to kill you. Yeah, because he's saying shit, he's talking He's talking shit. mad shit. He's yeah. like, oh, look at all these people, <laughs> and he's insulting, he sings this little song where he's insulting Taro because he's saying, like, oh, look, at, I think the line is something along, it's like, oh, look at this tower, too bad it's all hollow, like, there's nothing there, and it pisses off Taro's guys. Mm-hmm. And so, as he's about to basically slain this um, the clown. The clown, the uh, father, pokes his head out of window. This is the best part ever. He like pokes his head out of the window with his bow and shoots the guy. Not the clown, just but the, the guy, guy that's gonna wants to kill. Yeah, the, clown. the guy yeah, that yeah. wants gotcha. to kill the clown. Because you just see him. But you get this like clear just... shot. Yeah. yeah. You all, all of a sudden you just see an arrow go through that guy, and then like the screen or like the, the camera, camera like, just like yeah. turns, and you see him just like. But he's staring like he's crazy, <laughs> yeah. like, holding a bow at the top of his tower. He's like, mm. and every, and then he just kind of like goes back inside, and everyone's like, "Whoops!" Yeah, and they kind of like step down. They're like, "Whoa, gotta get mm-hmm. out of here!" <laughs> and so then you hard cut to at night, and the clown singing the song again right. to all of the king's guys, and everyone's laughing and singing along, and that's when uh, the king gets invited to this party, quote unquote him and his vizier guy get invited to this party sponsored by his son and they're like huh okay so they go up and it's just like oh it's just you and your wife and me and my vizier and taro basically says or maybe he has a guy say it for him but they lay down this shit where they say this is a contract we want you to sign this in blood that says taro has all the power and you don't and he's just like, why would I do that? Like, you're making me sign away everything. And his vizier reads it, and his vizier's like, well, I mean, it is technically just everything you already said. I mean, it doesn't negate anything you own. It just legally binds you to do this. And so he's like, fuck you guys, whatever. And he signs it. 
angrily does it, storms away. And the dad then is like, I, you know, fuck you guys, I'm going to stay at your brother's house. And so he leaves to go to Jiro's castle. Okay, this is Red Guy, right? Hmm? This is Red Son? Red this is Son. Red Son. Let's, okay. So what's going down at Jiro's castle? I have no clue. Because, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what kind of guy Jiro is. Maybe he's having an orgy. Maybe well, he's having a drunken <laughs> house. I don't know. Well, to add a little bit of background, when... When uh, Ichimonji is giving his son stuff, and he says, yep. Taro, you have everything. Taro is like, oh my god, I could not accept this. This is such a big thing, blah, blah. And Saburo calls him out for it. Yeah. Jiro starts kissing Taro's ass and is like, oh, you'll be such a great king, da 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 And then Saburo calls his ass out for that. Gotcha. So that's sort of how they set up his character, is he's kind of really the second child here. He's yeah. kissing ass of the first yeah. and the dad. And he's kind of a sleaze bag too. He's like, a sleaze. Yeah. Right. Like everything is everybody else's fault or doing, and uh, it's never. He his. doesn't take the blame. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He has a shrine set up to Taro in his household. <laughs> <laughs> and the father arrives, and the father is so angry with him because where's his father's shrine? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's not the fact that you have a shrine to your brother. It's the fact yeah. that it's not one to me. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just got. Did anybody? Uh, anybody seen uh, that that old show? Hey Arnold. Yeah. You know how Helga Pataki has like, oh, the Arnold Shrine made out of bubblegum? I'm just picturing like the Taro Shrine <laughs> made out of that, and it's just like some paper they colored yellow stuck to his shoulders, and he's like, oh, Taro, my brother. But no. How do you make <laughs> my manhood quiver? Oh. <laughs> God. That did not age well. No. Well, I don't, I think parents watching at the time probably were like. Yeah, yeah. that's a little too. <laughs> it's a little heavy. But instead, turns out... Jiro has a wife. Well, Jiro has a wife Okay. that is a Buddhist, which at this time is not the, right. the most cool thing. Yeah. She also was the daughter of another lord that Jiro's father, Ichimonji, killed and burned their castle to the ground. That makes sense. And then, I guess, like took her and made her marry his son or something. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. So we get kind of a scene of um, hostility, kind of like no, actually, no. it's the dad um, goes and sees her. Her name is Sue, and he's just like, "Oh, Sue, there you are." And she's like, "Oh, hello." And he says, "Like I've never seen someone as sad as you." And she smiles at him, and he's like, "That's even worse. Like you should fucking hate me. I destroyed everything you ever had, mm-hmm. and then married, made you marry my son. Like I'm such a piece of shit." And it's like, "Yeah, I mean, you feel bad for war crimes. You should." Um, yeah. <laughs> you really should. And then you find out that one Jiro is in on this diabolical plot, being set up by his brother to kind of consolidate power. Oh, okay. You also find out this movie's got a Jafar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> the vizier guy for Ichimonji is also in on it. So when he's like, oh, oh yeah, you know, I I'm gonna. I'm saying that this is legally what you told him. Now, it's really there. It's like he's just saying it because he's yeah. on he's on Taro. He's just he missing it. that staff with the, the snake staff eyes. And the beard. Like, yeah. His little beard. Okay. <laughs> does but, he have the hat? No, he actually doesn't no, have a hat at all. He doesn't. He's bald. Bald. Yeah. All right. I guess a uh, various Veneris yes. type of thing. No, 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 no. He's uh he's got that sort of standard like Oh, gotcha. Edges. Edges. Yeah. Okay. But he's very convincing. Yeah. And he so it turns out they're all in on it, and mm-hmm. Jiro's talking to his sort of subsidiary lords, and they're all like, "You gotta fucking kill Taro, dude, because once Dad's gone, I mean Taro's gonna have her thing. You kill Taro's weak, dude. Taro doesn't want to fight." Yeah, and you, Taro's being like manipulated by his wife mm-hmm. to do things. Who they're like, she'd be way cooler if she was your wife, and he's like, "Huh, you guys all just want to go to war and shit, like." Whatever. And he's like, but you're not wrong. We're going to do this. But you guys got to be fucking patient. And so they're kind of, you got plots within plots in this. It's very, this movie, I think Amber said it best last night, is very Game of Thrones. It's like if you took an entire season of Game of Thrones and successfully adapted it into like an almost three hour movie, this is it. This yeah. could be a series mm-hmm. in and of itself. And it would gotcha. be great. But so they're kind of just like, we'll figure this out. But dad's here, so let's have him stay over. But caveat, dad, you can come in the castle. You can stay here all you want. 
But your men, they got to stay outside. Right. They're not coming in. And she so kind of have this riot between Jiro's guys and the dad's guys. Everyone's betraying this dad. And the dad's like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Why won't you let me, my men stay here? Like, what the hell? And he's like, ah, oh, Taro told me to. And he's just like, oh, I see how it fucking is. I get your shit. And so Ichimonji's like, self-banish. Peace out, dickholes. I'm done. <laughs> I'm I'm leaving. Like, All fuck right. you guys. I don't want to see you guys anymore. Because he's very... And I think the whole point of this is that he's still kind of like, I'm the king. Right. And he doesn't quite get that he's not. Mm -hmm. And so him and his dude, he's like, come on, bros. We're fucking out of here. So they leave. They're, uh... Ichimonji's dudes are just kind of roaming, and they're in the sun, and they make a big point to be like, hey, they're in the sun, and they can't get food. Mm, yeah, it's hard. It's, exactly. Yeah. So, we're all sitting in the sun, trying to find food. They say the villages are abandoned. What's happening now, Patrick? Where are we going with uh, no food in the sun? No food in the sun. Taro's boys have been through villages and just burning shit that are loyal to his father. Um... And meanwhile, maybe they come across Sabaro. Sabaro, is that the way you pronounce it? Sa Saburo. Saburo. Yeah, Sabaro is the, the pizza, pizza place. place yeah. <laughs> Saburo, a blue guy. Um, they come across him, and although he uh, doesn't like his father, he still helps his father's men out mm -hmm. because it's the right thing to do. I will say, until you do get to Saburo again, you kind of do sit in anticipation of when is he coming back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, no, but you do get Tango comes back. Oh, Tango, I forgot about him. Yeah. So Tango comes back, and he's bringing food. And everyone's like, yippee, food. And then Ichimonji's Jafar is like, you guys going to take food from fucking peasants? These presumptuous-ass peasants giving us samurai fucking food? Fuck those peasants. And Ichimonji's like, yeah, because you can see he's kind of losing it. Yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah, you're right. Go burn their villages to the ground. Oh, wow. So and opposite. all the samurai are like, okay. Like, without question. They're just kind of like, okie doke. And they leave. And Tango's like, dude, no. Like, they they ran away to the mountains because Taro's orders. And he's like, wait, what? And it turns out Taro officially banished Ichimonji and said if anyone helps him, they will be destroyed. Okay. And so instead of betraying Ichimonji, mm -hmm. the peasants just ran away. Oh, right. And, of course, this is just enough time after the samurai have walked away yeah. to where he's like, fuck, oh yeah. my god, what'd I do? And Tango's like, look, we gotta go to this other lord's place, Saburo's there, we'll get, every, get the gang back together and we'll get this shit right, <laughs> you know? Or at the very least, you can hang out there safely, and yeah. it's not a big deal. Jafar's like, no, 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 no. You remember that castle that uh, you were gonna give your third son, but you didn't? We need to go there. That's there, There's no one there. That's our castle. We should go there. And he's like, yeah, that's my fucking castle. We're going to go to that fucking castle. Let's go to that castle. Yeah, You're even though it's right. obviously a setup. No, yeah. it's very yeah. clear. Because you do get um, the clown. So the clown's doing that Shakespearean thing where yeah. he's like saying kind of what's going on. So the clown does this great bit where he jumps on a rock and he like is looking around. He's like, <laughs> smells fishy. Like... What's that smell in yeah. the air right after Jafar's like, no, we need to go third castle. I'm like, yeah, I see yeah. what you're doing, clown. But, um, so they're like, no, fuck you, Tango. Get the hell out of here and take your food with you. Yeah, We're going because he castle. can't bear to see his, you know, youngest son because, you know, he banished yeah. him. Banished him, yeah. He can't yeah. face him. Exactly. So what's going on at third castle? Or the one that's empty, right? That's the one we're talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or is it... Yeah, okay. Um, Saro's got... Taro. Not Saro. Taro has uh, men standing by, or at least spies standing by, to watch it where his father goes and enter mm -hmm. the castle, and possibly to kill him while he's there in the castle, just to eliminate him as a threat. Mm -hmm. And um, the vizier poisons him, and that's how he dies? Or is it too early for that? Well... Just to go unpack it all, you're like, you're there and you're not. It yeah. is too early. I think it, at this point it's safe to say the king is sort of the main character of this. Right. Which is a little, like, you, you would expect it to be Sabro, this, like, prodigal son. Mm -hmm. But it's about the king yeah. and sort of him coming to terms with all this. What happens is Taro gets there 
or his guys get there. They open the doors, and all of Saburo's men are there. And you think it's going to be a fight. And the leader of these guys walks out, and he goes, Our lord doesn't live here. We don't give a shit about this castle. We only give a shit about him. Take it if you want it. We're going to go find him. And they all, just this legion of ar- <laughs> of people leave this castle with the blue banners flying and just leave. But yeah. this is the third castle that's supposed to be empty. This is the third castle. Em- empty. Yeah. That's, yeah, there's no okay. one there. Okay. So Taro's guys come in, and they're like, it's ours now. Then the king comes with everybody. And he thinks he's safe, thinks everything's cool, right? Like, he's just sleeping. Yeah, and then they ambush they him. They ambush him. Yeah. So they're sitting there. You no, know, it's him and two ladies or something like that. Well, his, his men are there. Them. His men yeah. are in the castle. He, hears, he wakes up, and he's like, the fuck? And he picks up this sword. And this sword is like, I think they did kind of a good job. Is like, you know like how a samurai sword looks? Yeah. Everyone has those except the king the king has what looks like a stylistically older sword like the handle's a little different it Mm kind of gives like another curve and they they do a good job like showing that to you without beating you over the head with it but he wakes with a start he's like what the fuck and he's looking out the windows and you see on like flanking both sides of the castle an army of red and an army of yellow okay and he's just like, those sons of bitches. And he rallies his guys to go fight him, and they're trying to stop him. And Amber pointed this out. There's no music in this entire movie up to this point, okay. except the credits. All right. So the intro credits have music, nothing, until you hit this sort of murder montage sequence of uh, Taro and... and, and, and Jiro's, the second son, yeah, second son, Jiro's who comes in. Guys yep. just wiping the floor with the, their father's men. Gotcha. I mean, and it's kind of that cool, like, this, they have guns, they have swords. It's got cheesy fake as shit, blood everywhere, but it's, yeah. it's fucking great. And um, they're burning this castle down, which I'll go ahead and say this now. The castle, they actually built an entire castle into Mount Fuji, or like on the mountainside of Mount Fuji, for this movie. Oh, wow. And then they proceeded to burn, burn it, it down. <laughs> and so later there's another castle that's like burned down. They're just using this set for that. But they built a whole castle. The production crew of this movie built a whole castle and then burned it to the ground oh. for this scene. Later there's another castle burning, but they use a fake gotcha. a fake deal. So yeah, everything's on fire. They're killing everybody. Everyone's dying, and you start having these sequences of everyone sacri- all the people who are the king's guys and women subsequently, are sacrificing themselves for the king. Gotcha. So like, you have a scene where these guys with arrows and guns come into the room, and all of his concubines just kind of surround him, and they're like, go upstairs, and they all get shot, and they all die. Gotcha. And he gets upstairs, kind of barricades himself in, and I think this is really the first spot where you get like these men are so afraid of this 70 year old man still because he is like a renowned warlord they won't go upstairs because they're like he's up there we're not going up there yeah because we don't know what he's going to do in their mind he could fucking wipe them out <laughs> gotcha. and so he's up there but in reality he's up there trying to find a way to get do, to kill himself oh all right he um when earlier he's running into the castle or some some such, and he goes to fight back against somebody, and his sword just shatters. Oh. So he's like, fuck, I, I, the handle like, falls, he has the, 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 the scabbard for it. And he goes up the stairs, he gets up the stairs, and he's like, I gotta find something. He's like looking for something to kill himself with, as I guess like traditionally you would do in Japan. And there's nothing in the room. There's no sword. He's it, it. It goes so far as to show like this is every single spot he would have kept the weapon, and it's like under a trunk, hidden in the wall, mm-hmm. behind a curtain. Like he has all these. He's looking everywhere, and they're all gone. And he's just sitting there as stuff starting to catch on fire and burn. And this is where they start. Well, I thought it was interesting to see like all the arrows flying through because you know they're not going to go upstairs. Yeah. So they go outside, start shooting arrows through the castle, mm-hmm. but none of them hit him. Yeah, you, you just see it kind of in the background the and everything, yeah. and he's just sitting there kind of like, I don't, like, basically losing his mind, because he's just mm-hmm. like, I don't know what to do. But down on the battlefield, we have a very important scene, Patrick. Do you happen to know what that important scene is going to be? Tango gets involved. In fights. Mm. I wish. Yeah. Really? It happens later. 
Jafar gets involved and dies. Jafar's not around right now. Yeah, Jafar is. Jafar's Jafar's that like CD like he ain't fighting nobody. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. No. Triple Cross. Jiro or one of his lords, I should say. Lord friends. Shoots Taro in the back. Oh, I didn't realize that Taro and Yeah, Taro Jiro and Jiro are there. there. Yeah, they're I leading. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. They're leading the they're leading the oh, Okay, I thought it was just two of those. No, no. Like and shoots Taro in the back. Kills him right right he's like getting ready to go in the castle, confront his father, kills, kills him. him. Okay. And you know, Ichi can't find anything to kill himself, everything's catching on fire. Ichi Monji loses it. Like he completely just snaps. And he's like, fuck it. And he just like he looks like a ghost. He just walks down the stairs. It got like Amber seen she's talking about all these arrows flying by or on fire. Yeah. People dying all around him, blood all over the walls. And he like comes out the front door and it's just awesome sequence of like you have half yellow army and the other half the red army and everyone just stops dead and they're just like staring like holy shit this guy's alive he's walking out and you can really see that fear i was talking about where they're staring at this man where they're like i don't know what he's capable of right from what i've heard he could kill everyone here if he wanted to he is completely gone his face is just like i'm not even here anymore and he just stumbles out through the crowd, out the gates, and just away. He so just, they just let him walk they away? They just let him walk away. They're like, mm-hmm. whoa. Because, like, Jiro's like, don't do anything. Just let him leave. And they just let him leave because they're like, he's lost. Who cares? Yeah. Right? This is where Tango is now hanging out with... Uh, Subaru? No, unfortunately. <laughs> the clown. The clown. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I wrote in my... <laughs> I wrote in my notes, Tango and Laughs. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, they are just kind of walking this storm, and they suddenly see the king just, like, picking flowers. He's crazy as shit, and he's, he has this huge bundle of flowers in this field. And they're like, oh, my God, like, my lord, my lord, are you what's up? With, what are you doing? What are you fucking doing? And he's just like, ah, la, 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 la. Yeah. And they're like, okay, we need to uh, get you out of here. And so they take him... And they're trying to find shelter. And this I found to be, until the end scene, I found this bit to be a little much, but it makes sense at the end, is they find this, like, rundown house. Who do you think's living in the house, Patrick? I'll give you a hint. It's not who you think it is. It is Sun Wei? Jiro's wife? No. Oh. Ooh, you're close. He's close. It's, it's Jiro's brother-in-law. Oh, oh! Yeah. So he survived the. Mm-hmm. Okay. You get introduced to this because you never really hear about him. You just get introduced to this character. Yeah. And he lets him in. It's this rundown shack. Right. He's like, I don't got much to give you. Blah blah blah. And Ichimonji kind of comes to, and he's just like, I'm a terrible person because like I've done this and that, and you guys should not be doing this for mm-hmm. me. You should leave me alone and all this. You know, and Tango and laughs are like. No, nah, man, like, we were going to stay with you. Well, Tango's like that. Laughs is, like, doing something, you know. Right, he's just, um, yeah. But then the beggar just kind of, like, he was going to get him a blanket, and he just drops the blanket, and he walks away. And Tango's like, the fuck you doing? Like, give us this blanket. And he picks up the blanket, and they look at the how it's made. It's a very ornate blanket with these kind of cranes all over it. And they're like, holy shit, you're part of this family. And he goes, yeah, you're the man who burned my father's castle to the ground and took my sister to marry your son. Right. And then the, made sure that the last thing I ever saw was my father's home burning to the ground because you cut my fucking eyes out when I was a child. Oh, okay. So he's, like, blind. And he's, like, fucking hate you. So he's, like, I can't... Well, And then he just kind of is, like, I can't welcome you very well in this house because... I'm poor. Like, he's like, I don't give a fuck because you're in the same place I am. You know? And then it clicks in Ichimonji's mind who the fuck he is because he starts playing uh, the flute. This guy is like, all I can do now is play the flute. All right. So he's playing this, like, horror song. It's like a horror music sound. (laughs) And Ichimonji freaks the fuck out and, like, knocks the wall of this place down. Yeah. He's, like, trying to get out, he's screaming, and he just, like, accidentally, like, knocks a wall of the shack down, and he's out in the rain, and they're like, what are you doing? Like, come back. And he just starts booking it again. And so they chase him. 
uh, uh, Tango and Laughs chase him. We now uh, get a nice cut back to the plot. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, Jiro and not quite Queen Cersei are having a conversation. What are they talking about, Patrick? How do we kill my wife so we can be married and wed? Mm. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that is nice. We're not quite there yet, but that is a conversation. How do we kill the, my youngest brother? Nah, they're kind of no. like he's banished. They don't really pay him much mind, weirdly enough. Um, instead... So, Jiro goes to the wife to basically say, hey, your husband's dead. You want to fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's wearing his armor, which is like, yeah. she kind of comes off as if she's unhappy about it. She's like, you're wearing my dead husband's armor. Like, that's so disrespectful. And he's just like, well, he would have wanted me to wear his armor, so it, you know, works out. Mm-hmm. And then he... Gives her some of his hair, like doing all not these, his like, hair, brother's, brother's the brother's hair, hair. Yeah, no, as like, proof know, that he's dead. Yeah, yeah, as proof that he's dead, and she kind of takes it and leaves. Well, she doesn't believe him that he oh. died mm-hmm. just in battle. Oh well, yeah, yeah. She's yeah. like, "Where's the body?" And they're like, "Oh, it was so disgusting. It would that not we had to burn you. it. Yeah. We did funeral rites right there." And yeah, the and she's like, "Huh, that's weird." And, and then she yeah. leaves with the hair, but then proceeds to come back, and she's carrying a helmet. And the helmet her, from the armor. Yeah, the yeah. helmet for the armor. And she was like, here, I think like you should wear this. And there's a poison snake inside and kills Jiro. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Not quite. You, uh, well, Jiro fires um, his two... Jafars. He fires the two Jafars, is mm-hmm. what happens. Oh, he has two Jafars. I so there's the Jafar that's hanging with his dad and then yeah. his own dude. Oh, okay. And he, they're like, you did so good. You're, like, doing such a good job. And he's like, yeah, I know. You're fired. <laughs> and they're just like, whoa? He's like, here's a bunch of money. Get the fuck out. And they're like, what? This is outrageous. And he's like, no, no, no. You guys betrayed my dad. I'm not a fucking moron yet. You guys <laughs> <laughs> get the fuck out of here. Take yeah. the money and leave. Or you don't have to take the money and we'll make you leave. And they're just like, okay, and, you know, get out. Queen comes back in to give him the helmet. He gets everybody out of there. Him and the queen are talking because this dude's thirsty as shit for this woman for some yeah. reason. And they both kind of throw down, like, she, this is the scene with the knife. Yeah. So she, like, walks up to him. And says some shit to him, and he's like, "The fuck's wrong with you?" And she, in this, it was, it's a crazy scene. She just like, and like pulls like a little knife out of where he had them standing, right. and like has him on the ground. And he, she's just like, "Motherfucker, I know you killed my husband, and you know what? I don't give a shit. I don't give a flying fuck because I want that guy to die." I just want to stay in this castle the whole time. I don't fucking care because this was my family's castle before your dad came and took it. And she like kind of cuts him on the side and like makes him admit that he yeah. did it. Yeah. But of course he won't admit it. He says one of the lords did it. And she's like, oh, you spineless little shit. Like, you won't even admit that you gave the order. Whatever. And she does this crazy ass, like, cackle. Oh, I, I know. Just oh. Like, oh, sent she starts. Did you ever see, like, Wheel of Fortune? <laughs> yeah. You know, like, Vanna White's walking, like, hitting the thing. Yeah, yeah. She's doing, like, that sort of movement. But with this evil yeah. cackle, and she's, and she's closing, closing the doors, the in doors in this, like all the doors, like... and she's like, ah, ha, 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 ha. as he, as she's holding the knife, and he's just like, what the fuck's going on? What the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on? And then she closes the door. And she's like, so let's make a fucking deal. Like, you're gonna let me stay here in my family's castle, as you know, this high up person. I'm not gonna tell anybody that you killed your brother because you know that shit's going to get real if that happens. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, okay, okay. (laughs) And then it gets real kinky and weird because then she, like, just jumps on him and is like, we're fucking. And she, like, licking the blood off his neck and stuff. And it's just like, whew. And it's just, they, they they get it on. They have crazy people sex. And she's basically, like, I want to be your wife. Like it, it becomes like instant clingy crazy. Yeah, yes. like I, I should be the only woman to touch you. Oh yeah. Or to have you. 
and she was like, we need to get rid of Sue. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, I can't get rid of Sue. Like, Sue is my wife, which is like, which was funny to me because this guy is such a, you know, like, Mm -hmm. weasel. And yet he's like, he still has that level of commitment to Sue. I know. He's like, whoa, 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 I'll, I'll divorce her. And she's like, no, I can't live in a world where someone else knows the touch of your flesh. And I'm just like, <laughs> what the ass? <laughs> so she's like, kill her or whatever. Oh, yeah. And he's like, uh, okay, I mean, I guess so. And she's like, if you don't kill her, we're never going to have sex again. And apparently this crazy people's sex was that good for Jiro because he's like, this is a reasonable offer and I will ensure that she dies. <laughs> 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 we cut back to Ichimonji. Playing um, around in the rain? No, it's not raining no it's more. It's not raining anymore? No. No. They found refuge in the burnt remains of Sue's family castle. Okay. And then someone comes nearby this castle. Is it finally the third son makes a reappearance? Nope, it's not the third son. (laughs) Sue? Not yet. Laughs? No, Laughs is with them. Tango and Laughs is there. (laughs) The blind guy. No, not yet, not either. Jafar. Yep, there we go. Bingo, you got (laughs) it. First try. (laughs) But yes, Jafar and his buddy, I guess. We'll call him Iago for the purposes of the analogy. Okay. They are riding by on their with their horses and their shit, and Tango is like, them the motherfuckers that betrayed us. Yeah, the traitors. Oh, shit, no. And he's like, <laughs>, laughs, watch our lord. And he gets on a horse, and he just races off after him, and he's like, you motherfuckers, like, you better turn, you better, you're just gonna die. Like, he's just straight up like, you're just gonna die. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to kill you. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. we don't work for him no more. Like, we actually would love to work for you again. We got money and stuff. Like, we can hang. (laughs) And Tango's like, oh, shit, no. And he starts trying to kill him. And you get kind of like this chase. I think Iago gets away. But um, he he skewers fucking Jafar off the horse. And you get it from Laughs' perspective. Him and the king are like watching him out in the distance, like running. And you just see like... And then Jafar's on the ground. They're, you know, Tango is like... Oh, I'm going to kill you, you're a piece of shit. And Jafar's like, you know, fuck you. You're never going to be able to stop Jiro. Like, he's got everything now. Like, fuck yeah, you. Yeah, he killed and shit. Taro. Yeah, he killed Taro. He tells him he killed Taro. Yeah. And he's like, oh, well, fuck you too. And then kills him. Tango's like, if he killed Taro, that means shit's getting real. I got to go, got to go get Saburo. The king... Is now that he's crazy, if you just say Saburo to him, he freaks out and tries to run away from you. So he tells the clown, like, we gotta go to Saburo, so we gotta get the king to agree to go there. And he's like, you ain't gonna go there, man. He's, every time you say his name, he freaks out, runs away. And he's like, okay, well, you know what? I'm gonna try it anyway. So he tries it anyway. King freaks out, he's trying to get away. He goes, okay, you go get the king. He's just running into the castle. Oh, okay. He's like, you go get the king, keep an eye on him, take care of him here. I'm gonna go to. I think his name is like Fukimanji or something like that. Lord Fukimanji's house. I'm going to go get Saburo and we're going to bring him back here. We're going to fix this fucking mess. And the clown's like, okay. And so Tango leaves. So the clown is kind of left to deal with this like shit show of a yep. king. <laughs> like That's, it's just this yeah. whole sequence of him just. But they're great fucking scenes. Yeah, they are. They're some of the best scenes. Just kind of movie. realizing where he's at, like the ruins and everything mm-hmm. and like what he did basically, and yeah. how bad of a person he actually is. But it's also like, you get these amazing, and we'll see it and we'll talk about it more after we watch it, but you get these amazing scenes where the clown is realizing like, he spent his entire life in the service of this man yeah, to entertain and him, and now he's he like, is. I'm taking care of him. And there's this fucking amazing scene where he's just like, the king doesn't even notice he's there anymore. Cause he's like, my lord, you got, you drop your fucking jacket, like here's your fucking mm-hmm. or your whatever, your robe, put your robe back on, and he just keeps walking. He's like, you don't even fucking know I'm here. Like I spent my whole life doing this shit, and he's like, you know, what, fuck it. He puts the jacket on or the 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 robe on, and he goes to walk away, and he's like, I can't fucking leave. Like he's he realizes like even though this is the only thing he's ever done for this guy, it's also this is his life. This is who he is. Right. And so he's like, I'm fucking stuck with you, and I hate every minute of it. And the king is just like. The, the clown breaks down and starts crying. And the king is like, is someone crying? Where am I? Like, what's going on? And he's like, and no point looks at him. He's just like looking around. 
and there's this whole there's other stuff that goes on there and that's more or less their sequences but you do get the order from Jiro to go kill Sue okay they tell one of the lords the lord who killed Taro go get her head and crazy is like make sure you put a lot of salt on that head we can't sit it up on a pike and look at it if it's all nasty and bold. No, she wants it shit. preserved. She wants it preserved. And so this guy's like, dude, this woman's crazy. She's messing with you. This is a bad idea. And he's like, fuck you, do it or don't. So <laughs> this guy, I think his name is like Kagero. He comes back and he's got a little bundle in white. And they're just like, oh my god, like, what is, did you do it? And he's like, I brought you exactly what you asked for. And he gives him the thing. What's in What's in the box? <laughs> or the bag in this what's case. In the, yeah. <laughs> what's wrapped not, in cloth. Not Sue Wei's head, something else. Yeah, you got any idea what it might be? The way this movie's going? I don't know. It's a horse. Horse's head? Ooh. Well, we got an animal head, so that's yeah, close. We're close. We could do like yeah. a godfather thing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'd be kind of concerned if they were like, huh. That's pretty big. I don't remember her head being that big. <laughs> yeah, I remember Weird. like thinking that because that's I was just well, it's like, all wow, wrapped that's a up. big ass head, yeah. like Sue. <laughs> well, it's also full of salt, and but no, they they the the queen is like, oh, I have to be the one with the balls to open this, and they're just like, mm, I guess so, and so she opens it, and it's just like a stone sh- fox shrine head. Okay. And then salt goes all over the floor. And she's like, the fuck is this? This is a stone. And he's just like, oh, well, that's so weird. It was a woman when I killed her. I guess, you know what they say, though? Foxes turn into women and, you know, to mess with men. And he's looking at the king saying it. And she's like, you son of a bitch. Like, what the fuck? (laughs) This is is a fox. It's stone. It's from a shrine. And he's like, oh, man, this fox knew how to turn into stone, too. Whoa! And oh she's just like, God. "What the fuck is like you piece of shit?" And he goes, "Well, you know." And he starts listing off these histories from like China, yeah. where he's like, "Well, this king, you know, a fox turned into a woman. He married the fox, and the fox tore his kingdom to shreds. Same thing happened here. Same thing happened here. This one turned back into a fox and ran away, and they never were able to catch her. Anyway, food for thought, my lord. I'm heading now. If you want <laughs> anything, like, let me know." And he leaves, and she's like, "I fucking hate this guy. Like this guy's a piece of shit." You know, they're just they're raging about this. Yeah, and she basically is just like, I will never see you again until yeah. Sue is dead. Yeah, Sue is not dead. We ain't fucking. <laughs> so, what happens next, Patrick? We're staying at Jiro's castle. We're still at we're still at Jiro's house. Well, no, then you're back to Jiro's house because I thought Jiro took over Tasso or Taro's house. Well, wherever we're wherever Jiro is, okay, uh, it might be his house. We don't. I don't think we get a clear indication of that. Hmm. Your dreams are going to come true. Oh, they finally, he goes, kill the youngest brother now. And mm. they battle? Not quite yet, but Sabro comes. Oh, Sabro, Sabro arrives at he wherever arrives at the, is. His army has arrived at the castle, okay. along with his father-in-law's dudes. Oh, okay, yeah. so Suwe's... No, no, no sorry. No, this is the they, third, the right, other lord, right. yeah. Okay. They just show up, and they're like, yo, your brother's back. And he brought his father-in-law's men with him, too. And they're just like, fuck. And he says, but all Saburo wants is their father. He says, give me dad, and I'll leave in peace. Is Tango with them? Yes, Tango went and found him and brought so, him. So, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. So, wait, wait, wait. Well, yeah, yeah. Why don't Tango take him to the burnt castle? Why because would... they don't know where he's at because the clown had lost him during this whole No, season. no, 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 no. That didn't happen yet. Really? Yeah, no, that okay. happens when they go to fight. Okay. No, um, just doesn't. he was like, we need to go stop. Uh, Tango's mission was sort of like, we have to go stop Jiro. Okay. You just keep, because the idea is like, just keep him here. Where are we going to put him, you know? Yeah, okay. Um, But I mean, this was also resolved relatively quickly. When they're like, we know where to go to get him, that's when they lose him. There's this whole bit where oh, the king yeah. freaks out. And he starts running away from the clown, and the clown chases after him. The king cuts left and goes behind a rock, and the clown's like, uh, and keeps going straight. You know, one of those bits. All right, gotcha. So Jiro's scared as shit, though, of this. He's like, oh, fuck. Like, I, what happens? And then his wife is like, well. Wait, Suwe or the. No, no. The crazy. Crazy, crazy. Crazy, okay. Yeah, crazy, crazy's the one who did. It turns out that 
the Lord had told Sue and subsequently her brother had them run away. So okay. Sue is running away with her brother. And that's like a one off scene just to show you that. Gotcha. The new wife, crazy, mm -hmm. tells Jiro, You fucking idiot, you shouldn't have let your father live. Because now if Sabro gets your dad, he's gonna know you killed your brother and shit's gonna just hit the fan you're gonna lose everything and yeah. our shit's gonna be fucked right so you need to kill him kill kill everybody and he's like well how do i kill him like all he wants to do is get my dad yeah, that'll start a war and she goes just let him go get your dad and then assassinate him okay that makes sense yeah. and everyone's kind of like this is really shitty you shouldn't do this and he's like well we're fucking, so... <laughs> <laughs> you know. So they're just sitting there like, we're going to do this. Um, You have up on the hill, father-in-law's guys are hanging out. Down in the the plains, you have uh, Sabro's guys chilling. And they're waiting. And all of a sudden, all of Jiro's men, all of them from everywhere on the plains... This whole region just show up on the battlefield and they're like mm. doing this show of force. Yeah. They're like, you know, look at me. And Jiro's like, yeah, we're going to fuck your day up if you don't, you know. The climax isn't yet? Not yet. Jesus. No, we we get close. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone's showing up, Jiro, show of force. Joe of force. Okay. We've lost dad. Okay, lost Clown dad. Clown runs off to go tell Sabro. Okay. Clown tells Sabro, I can't find your dad. I lost him here. I'm so sorry. And they're like, oh, crap. We can't just, like, stand here until nightfall, basically. Yeah, they're like, because we they need were to planning wait. on going to find him at nightfall. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, okay, we got to go, but we have to discreetly, like, go. So that way right. Jiro doesn't see. But, of course, Jiro ends up seeing because it's not that hard. Yeah, like, they're, like, right across the field. Yeah. They were going to so, wait till night because Jiro wouldn't see them where they're going. Okay. Yeah. But they're like, fuck, we can't because who knows where he is now. Yeah. At the same time, Sue, her blind brother, and this woman who was leading them to safety, she goes, hey guys, like, let's go to your burnt castle. No one will find you there. That's what scares dad, is he sees her and he thinks she's like a ghost or something. Oh, okay. The woman is like, because the brother is bitching that he left his flute behind, which is kind of some shit. Because this dude's like, he straight up says, the only entertainment I've had in the last whatever years is this fucking flute. And he forgot it at home. Yeah. Well, that's your own fault, dumbass. Exactly. Yeah. And they're kind of treating him like that. And well, they, and he's even like, you know what, forget the flute, like it's not worth it. Yeah. But the woman's like, don't worry, I'll go back and get your flute and I'll catch up. And so she's been gone for a while. And Sue's like, she's been gone. Brother, wait here at the burned castle. Here's a picture of Buddha. It will protect you. It's a thing. Um, Can he feel it? Is yeah. It like he's holding on yeah, to it's it. It's like a roll well, I mean, because he's blind, so I, that's why it, I it could yeah, be a piece of paper. I know. Paper. That's why it was kind of <laughs> ironic. She but... just, like, picks up a stick. Is like, trust me on this. <laughs> <laughs> but she's like, I'm going to go see if she's okay. And he's like, no, forget the flute. It's not fucking worth it. Like, if you get caught, you're going to die. And she's like, no, no, no. It'll be fine. Just wait here. This picture will protect you. And he kind of gives her this, like... Because he has this whole spiel about how he wishes he could be like Sue because she's so, like, devout to Buddha. Right. And he's tried to be that way, but he can't. And he just kind of gives her, like, that's not how this works. Like, you can't fucking do that. Yeah. <laughs> no. So she leaves. They tell Sabro, and Sabro goes, all right, I'm going to go find my dad. And uh, I don't think it's Tango. It's, like, Sabro's general guy. He's like, send ten people with him. You need to make sure you're safe. Sabro exits and that is going to be our climax because from that point forward to the end of the movie shit starts in the fan starts going nuts so yes any thoughts on how this movie's going to end uh jiro's people attack at night because mm -hmm. obviously the 10 i imagine this sabro's armies maybe maybe 75 to 100 guys or are we looking thousands right now for no these no no armies? we're we're working probably 100, 200 people. All right. I could see them definitely getting away. Maybe they got a Sabaro standing, you know, that stand out there in front of the formation, kind of like, oh, I'm still here. Mm -hmm. uh, they get away discreetly. Um, the father winds up back at the burnt castle where the blind man is, mm -hmm. and they kind of come to terms with each other type of thing. Uh, Sabaro runs into Suwe on the way back, 
or searching for a father, be like, oh, I know where your father is, but we have to go get my brother's flute. So they go back and try to find the brother's flute, and somehow Euro's men or Euro is around there. You know, I'm not saying Jiro, I'm saying Euro like the sandwich. It's you know, okay. Was, mm-hmm. I wasn't going to call red you guy, until later. Red guy and blue guy. <laughs> but red guy finds them in the woods on their way back to the castle and sees them go into the castle. And then there's a final fight scene between maybe 10 to 20 guys on each side. And the father sacrifices himself to, for Saburo and Saburo kills Jiro. Nice. That's how it ends. That is a nice ending. I know how the King Lear story goes. I know that's yeah. not, but, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, like I said, it's loosely based. It's not beat for beat. All right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go watch this movie, answer Patrick's questions, and see if he's right and see if he called what happens next in this movie. It'll be roughly two hours and 41 minutes for us, but only about 30 seconds for you. So we'll see you on the other side. Oof, we are back. So, Ran, how are we feeling after that? Uh, I feel like the American translation meets it along too. Instead of Japanese, you said was revolt in the beginning of the episode. I think Ran, because it kind of, you see a lot of people, you know, running from issues and problems, you Mm -hmm. know, that they should have faced head on instead of hiding from them. That's a good... Wow, I didn't think about that angle. Is that yeah, really... like, I ran yeah. so far away. Yeah. <laughs> <Flock of seagulls>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, this movie, where we left it off before we took our break, was um, Jiro starts losing it and decides to spark a war. Saburo finds his father in a field. They have a little reunion, and everyone's kind of cool with that. And War then, starts up. Yeah. They start killing each other. Saburo dies. Yeah, shit starts hitting the fan. Yep. Yep. Bang. Ichimonji, distraught, dies on his son's body after his son's army fucking won. Yep. And then the last shot of Jiro is one of his lieutenants or lords telling him to prepare yourself for death. Yep. Yep. And yep. then not to mention uh, Sue gets her head cut off for oh, no oh, fucking yeah. reason. Yeah. Yep. And Crazy K dies too. <laughs> Crazy K. And a great and a great scene to me with oh, their the great scene. blood spurting that they great. have there. I it's think like someone just can stepped agree on that, like yeah. a bag and just. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You got a oh man I can't remember his name so the K but that that general of Jiro's yep. who's just he's not fucking around. He's no. like, Why did you do this? And she's like because I wanted that I it was my plan all along basically to ruin this family and destroy everything they've done for what they did to me. And he's just like motherfucker. <laughs> and it's just blood hits the wall, and yep. it's we're done. Mm-hmm. Like yep. we're we're done with her. There's and like no Jiro doesn't even have time to react to that. He's just like standing there, and the guy's just like, "We need to go outside now and like deal with this." Well, he's just like, "We're going to die." Uh, yeah. yeah. So you get ready to kill yourself, and we'll see you on the other side. Exactly. <laughs> Let's go. And it's just this movie on like such a serious note is like this ending encapsulates everything, right? As you start with. Ichimonji, just like you know, I don't. I'm. I've been fighting for so long. I don't feel like doing it anymore. I kind of want. I want to have my cake and eat it too. You guys take care. You have all the power, but I have all the names, and I get to do everything still. But you guys get. To, you have to run the show, and it just it falls apart, just like Saburo said. Mm-hmm. Yep. But at the end, instead of being spiteful, Saburo comes back and is like, "Come on, Dad. I just came here to save you." And more forgiving for his father, and that's what his father wanted at the towards the end. And exactly. And then everyone dies. And then everyone dies. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I think, and I didn't notice it until this this watch through, was the, the final shot of the movie is the blind character, Surumaru, is standing where his sister left him on the burned remains of their family's castle. And he's like on the edge of this wall. He's holding the Buddha picture and his stick, and he's, like, tapping, trying to find where the edge is, and he almost falls, yeah. and he drops the Buddha picture. And it, so it's like, it protected him, just like he said, or his sister said. But you have this scene right before that where the clown character laughs is just 
you know, he's yelling to the sky, like, fuck you, God, or gods, right. whatever's yeah. up there. Like, all you want to do is just kill us, and I think he says, like, step on us like ants or something. Men are bet more entertainment as when there's sorrow and killing each other than when they're happy. and Exactly. And yet, the deity protected this random blind guy from just falling off an edge. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you could take out of that, but it, clearly there's a bit of juxtaposition there. And, and I mean, Tango did say that the reason why... I guess they were targeted is because of all of the crimes that the father had committed and that everybody else was committing, you know, like with the first two brothers, like out of selfishness, like wanting to retain the power that their father had instead of just working together. Exactly. And I think that's what the father realizes, especially at the end is he's like on the field where he killed so many people and he's just, this is what I deserve. I must be in hell. Like everything is terrible. Yeah. It's it's a movie that lasts just about as long as Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and yet the layers are more than happy to peel back because it's a movie that you keep diving deeper and you keep getting more out of it as opposed to just more ambiguity. Yep. Yeah, Agreed. <laughs> but there's a lot. I mean, we could spend hours sitting and talking about this movie. Um, obviously, for your guys' sake, we're not going to make you sit through that. <laughs> But there's a lot to, to unpack here. And there also is a crazy amount of trivia about this movie. Oh, well, I'm sure there is. I had to really pick and choose what I wanted to say because a, a lot of it was interesting. So, first off, this movie took 10 years to, like, come to fruition. While Akira Kurosawa was working on another movie of his, he started planning this one. He storyboarded this whole movie over the course of this 10 years as like paintings like he went through and made a painting for each scene wow. of this movie and i think that shows i mean you see these crazy shots these huge you know scenes the of, landscapes yeah exactly yeah. you're not on a set you are somewhere in japan i assume yeah this movie had 1400 extras and 200 horses so every person you see in there is totally real Yep, and probably most of the extras were killed, dead extras. Yeah, after seeing some of those 200 <laughs> horses running around, yeah. that I don't think everybody walked out of there. <laughs> <laughs> they either were limping, they were dead, or they had a busted leg. Like, they're not doing too hot. All the armor, by the way, that everybody was wearing was specifically designed by Akira Kurosawa himself. Wow. Allegedly. This is all off IMDb, so there may be some grains of salt. Gotcha. But allegedly, he designed all the armor for this movie. The other crazy thing that is a bit more known is the castle that they attack Ichimonji in and that they're running around in towards the end is they actually built it for this movie. So the castle they burned down, they actually burned down a castle that they built. The production team for this movie built somewhere near Mount Fuji. They burn it down, and that's what they're using as their set. This movie also had permission to film in two other actual castles in Japan. I didn't quite get the names of those, but there are two actual castles they were allowed to film at, which I believe is where they were filming some of these uh, interior scenes, and maybe somewhere they're outside. But I was just I was blown away. I mean, you don't see you don't see Avengers actually building yeah, Avengers no, compound, yeah, yeah. you know. I mean, that, as far as trivia goes, that is about as far as I want to go, because that is a rabbit hole <laughs> of crazy stories that are just there. I mean, and, and of course, some not-so-crazy ones that are just whatever. But uh, overall, you know, I really like this movie. I think it's a classic. I think um, it's one of Akira Kurosawa's best. I believe this was at least nominated for an Oscar. So, you know, standard procedure here at So What Happens Next. If you could change anything about this movie... Guess towards the end, what would it be? Patrick, you want to go first? Uh, I wouldn't say at the end. I would say some of the scenes felt a little long. Like some of the war scenes, we get it, killing everyone, everyone's dying. I think some of those could have kind of been cut. I did love the landscape shots at the beginning, like you said. Those were beautiful. Um, Towards the end, I know you said he based this off of King Lear. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess towards the end, maybe one moment of happiness, maybe they crown laughs as a lord or something. That would have been... Kind of entertaining a little bit, yeah. but um, honestly, I just besides cutting the scenes a little shorter, I don't really wouldn't change a thing. Yeah, I think that says a lot about this movie overall. Yeah. Amber, how about you? Any changes uh, you'd like to make to the movie overall or anything? 
honestly, the war scenes were like my favorite part of the film, <laughs> and so I would have like kept those because that was. It was great to see, like, like the name of the movie, Chaos. Just, like, a bunch of people running around on horses. Like, there's not really, like, there's no, like, uniformity in that. Like, there's no leader for that. Because first it's Taro, and then, of course, Taro gets killed, and then it's Jiro. But then Jiro kind of, like, falls off the wagon because of, like, Lady Cade. So, yeah, he submits to alcoholism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's uh, Saburo, but then he get, he dies along with his father. So really, there's just no one there. Like, there's no leadership, basically. And so I liked seeing, like, everybody just kind of, like, not, like, just kind of, like, doing whatever. So much, like, chaos going on. So much, like, bloodshed going on. I think what could have been shortened was the dialogue in some of the scenes, especially the one where they go to the shack and they meet the blind dude like that definitely went longer than it should have. Although I do understand like why they needed to do that because it was, you know, the father coming to realization of like all of his, you know, war crimes and what he has done to all of these people. So, but I think like they could have really shortened the dialogue in like some of the scenes and maybe they were just doing that for effect. So, it's true. I could I I could see both of you guys' points. Like the war scenes did, especially on the second watch through. Like it felt a little long, and then, like Amber said, like some of the talking scenes were long, and like the the action sequence, let's call them, did kind of they wake you up a little bit from the long talking sequences. I think if I were to change anything, it would honestly be maybe, and I'll just pick the other third of this movie that we're not really talking about much as I think I would cut back a few of the the, the dialogue scenes with Ichimonji and Laughs, Clown. I think some of them are there and they work. And I mean, some of them are some of the best scenes. Like I said earlier, they're some of the best scenes in this whole movie. But then others, I'm just kind of like, I get it. You know, like, okay, whatever. That's cool. It doesn't do too much to facilitate the plot. I think all of them work and all of them should be there, but we can stick some together you know like when the when the clown decides i'm, I'm gonna leave and then yeah. he's like no i'm not gonna leave i think that could kind of be i think that almost would fit better with when they're walking around and ichimanji looks at him and he's just like who are you yeah you yeah know, like and that would work you so know having better. the clown take jabs at the king like i felt like that could have also been taken out see i liked that because i think that showed that ichimanji's now at this level of this court jester you know like he is no better than this other guy and he's also so like so far gone that at the beginning of the movie you'd see him rage he would have killed him if he said yeah exactly good point yeah and now he's just like "Mm." yeah you know so i guess standard review you know amber what are you giving this movie and would you suggest people watch this movie so this movie's been out for a while so i'm sure plenty of people have seen it but Mm -hmm. what would you say i'd probably give this a nine out of ten Oh, wow. Because it's a classic, and obviously you can see that with, like, how detailed everything is. And like you said, this took 10 years for him mm-hmm. to, like, to develop this film. So, like, I really appreciate, like, you know, how the actors and actresses are really involved in their roles. Like, even, like, Lady Cade and, like, Sua, like, they obviously have a place, like, in the film, and that's pretty evident, so... I mean, there's not, a, like, really a lot that's wrong with it besides it just being, like, a very long film. But, mm-hmm. again, it's a Japanese drama, so I'm kind of, like, used yeah. to those. I think it's definitely a movie you have to be prepared, you know. It's, like, like to me, Blade Runner is kind of like this. Is It's yeah. such a good yeah. movie, but i got to be in the mood for it, and i got to be mentally prepared. Yeah, exactly. because it's very serious. Like... Right. Patrick, what about you? I'll give it a solid 8-2. Okay. And that's because this is actually, like, my first... Japanese epic, I guess we can... Is okay. it on yeah. epic scale, I, I would... I would call this yeah. an epic. Yeah, I mean, I've seen uh, 13 and then a few others. Uh, but um, I liked it. I would definitely suggest it if you're a fan of these type of movies. And like Thomas has said, you, you got to prepare yourself because it was it was a bit. Mm-hmm. It was a lot at, to take in at once. Um, yeah. And uh, if you don't mind reading subtitles, because I think they are important, you need to... 
be able to read those um, to understand some of the scenes that are happening. Yeah. Uh, but overall, I liked it, and I would definitely recommend it to others. Okay. You've seen Seven Samurai, correct? Yeah. If you were to compare the two, which one would you put out on top? Oh, I like Seven Samurai better. I agree on that. Um, but as for me, I think I would give this movie... I still think I'd give this movie, honestly, like 9.5. Like, this movie... The first time I saw it, I was kind of like, oh, is this going to be some cheesy old samurai movie? And then it just hits you like a brick, and you're like, whoa. Uh, and I was just in it, you know? And it, it was like the perfect viewing environment at the time is the room's completely dark. The only light in the room is this movie. It's so colorful, so vibrant, so much shit's happening, and it's just like, I'm into it. Watching it again, you know, it's been a while so it was kind of watching it and going okay wow like yeah this movie there's so much that happens there's so much to take in but yeah like we've been saying it is an undertaking and i mean you got to be in the mood for a serious movie that you want to really watch not just something in the background that you're hanging out exactly yeah but i would still say go watch it i mean it's it's one of those movies i agree with all those lists it's a movie to watch before you die you know like definitely watch this watch blade runner 2 it's another one of those kind of movies um and also seven samurai yeah you know? As a great movie, it might possibly be a stay tuned, but because it's a fantastic film as well, and I don't believe Amber's seen it. No, I have not. Okay. <laughs> it's a very, very good film. Um, also by the same director. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there are. Yeah, look for a bad review since on Rotten Tomatoes, I believe you sent me this. It was ninety-five percent each side, or was it ninety-seven for it audience was or something like that? Ninety, like six and ninety-seven. Mm, okay. I did manage though to find one bad review on this movie. I know. It's surprised me. So a lot, I guess apparently, so beware, purchasers beware. The version we had apparently was this version as well, though we didn't suffer as much because it was digital. There are some uh, Blu-ray versions of this movie floating around out there that are less than good. Like there's a lot wrong with them or whatever, so buyer beware on that. Yeah, but if however, you're... Uh international that's when you really buy or beware on that or you're ordering off amazon make sure you got the right region there and that's the problem most of these most of these reviews are i live in america and i can't find a region one flipping dvd of this thing yeah however i managed to find a actual legitimate one-star review that talks about the movie okay not the physical disc it's by sean it's from june 30th 2004 okay so we are throwback here not as good as all you people are making it out to be, is the title. Wow. This movie is terrible. I bought it expecting a good action epic with lots of battles and sword fights. <laughs> there are no battles and there are two massacres where all that happens is quote unquote samurai with guns shoot each other and women. Samurai don't have guns. The story was good, but they ruined it with two hours and 30 minutes of talking on and on about the same topic over and over. Yak, yak, yak. There is no drama. The characters don't develop, except for the old guy who just walks around staring and goes crazy. The performances are the same in everyone, yelling even when they're happy, and they all sound the same, even the women. No action, no drama, nothing except talk and fake blood from the stupid shooting. No swords, guns, what? Very bad movie. I was disappointed greatly. <laughs> I would give zero stars, but they don't let me. That's where that fucking review yeah. winds up I like up how going your voice just transitioned yeah. to Trump. That's <laughs> when he starts saying very bad movie, I'm like, yeah, we're there. <laughs> well, Sean, movie was made in nineteen eighty five. That was almost you watch that nineteen years later? I mean, come on. What do you what do you expect? You can't you don't get yeah. blood scenes like and just you get say today. All the characters are the same. There's yeah. a big ass difference yeah. between well, Lady Kate and Sue. I like, love how <laughs> well they juxtapose each other. They're complete yeah. opposites. I and love it's how the same he says with the brothers. Like there's exactly. obvious difference. I love how he says there's no drama. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's and what then this he's movie like, is. I wanted action, but there was a massacre. I was like. <laughs> it's like, I want action, but it was action with guns, not right. It's like, I'm pretty sure Samurai had fucking guns. Yeah. Like, this is 
Last Samurai guy. Last this Samurai. Is, this man is Japanese. I'm sure he knows what they had and yeah. didn't have. It took ten years for him to make this movie. This dude wasn't just sitting on his fucking hands the whole time and just going like, man, it'd be pretty cool to make like a movie like this. Yeah. Fuck no. He's probably doing research and shit. It's just he, this guy wanted this guy wanted a fucking mindless action movie yeah. and a samurai cutting each other up like the like ninja assassin or some shit. <laughs> not not a movie that clearly is a dramatic movie where the characters do nothing but develop yep. the entire time. They either become worse versions of who they were in the beginning or they become better. That old guy, the great lord ruler of this fucking region, by the way. He goes crazy. That's his, like, Descent into Madness. It's just, like, Sean, I hope you did that review. I feel like review. he just missed the entire, mo- like, the point of the movie. I agree. Yeah. I feel like he sat for two hours. Just an old man whatever. running around with his, like, eyes, like, wide open. It's yeah. just, like, he's obviously going crazy. And there's a point to it. Yeah. I hope that this guy was maybe, like, 12 when he wrote this review. And that he's listening now and maybe goes, man, that was a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Because we're calling you out, Sean. <laughs> but, yeah, that just, you know, it's it's okay to have opinions on movies. It's just. But sometimes you're wrong. Yeah. That. Just have a few, like, right, correct remarks in there. Yeah, really. I mean, it's like, it's not a drama. That's exactly, that essence of what it is. Yeah. <laughs> but, yes, I think all of us in here enjoy the movie. I think grand scheme. I mean, this is like one of those Roger, e- Roger Ebert was like, I love this movie kind of type things. So, dude, I don't know. <laughs> Cisco probably said the same thing since he was alive back then when it first came oh, out, yeah. so I imagine he did. I mean, it's just a it's a solid movie. I suggest everyone watch it at least once in your life. Just know what you're getting into. Yeah. You know, honestly, it's a movie where if you do a bit of research before you go see it, that's okay. It won't spoil it for you. Yeah. You know? I mean, we all told Patrick pretty much everything that happens. It still didn't ruin the movie for him. No, it did know? not at all. And it's just because it does something on an emotional level, I think, that you don't capture with just telling somebody what happens. All right. So uh, for this movie, our beer of the week, uh, once again, got from Benny's Lincoln Park. Is the you go Arbor... there a lot. <laughs> <laughs> is We're the... not alcoholics by any means. Yeah, we no, don't have a no, problem. No. <laughs> no issues here. Is the uh, Arbor Oak Amber Ale from Lake Effect Brewing right here in Uptown. And... Um, I thought it was pretty good. It wasn't terrible. It's actually the Morton Arboretum cedar chips that they have there. And it's brewed with it, and I thought that was a kind of a cool combination there. No, I agree. It was a very good beer. Yeah. It fit this movie um, just because it's so hard to sort of pin the vibe of this movie, I think. But this being like, you know, it has a much more earthy tone to it, and you're dealing with a movie that is very colorful. It's very scenic. And it does a lot of just dealing with the reality of everything. And that, to me, is this beer. You know, we're working with a nice oak flavor, got the cedar chip flavor in there, too. And it's this nice, strong, but not stout red air. Red yep. ale. Yeah, so thanks again, Lake Effect, for providing that. And it was uh, very good. And uh, thanks, Benny's, again, for your great selection for Chicago beers. And as usual, we are not sponsored by either of them. We just like what they give and uh, sell and the products they make and we just want to give them a shout out that they deserve. So if you happen to be in the area, check out Lake Effect Brewing. Yeah, and uh, if you have any ideas of other breweries, local to Chicago, we're starting out first, that you think we could try, please send a comment on our webpage, on our Instagram, Twitter, all those uh, different social media feeds. Yep, and we will be posting pictures as usual of what we're drinking and what we're doing on there. So feel free to check those out, comment on those. Let us know uh, if you have some ideas of something we maybe want to try. and Or if you have a suggestion of a beer and a movie that could go with it, that would be crazy oh, too. Perfect. Or any type of drink, to be honest, like tequila. We could always drink tequila. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a, there is a few uh, Chicago distilleries that we can always try also. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And just not uh, off-color Dino S'mores in Jurassic Park. Because we, I've, you know, I've done that one before. I don't. It's, I let's <laughs> make it clear now. Everyone's seen Jurassic Park, right? Yeah. We've all seen Jurassic Park. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if you happen to say that, and I'm sorry, it just can't. Yeah. It can't happen. It's not. Yeah. We'd have to go find someone who hasn't seen it and shame uh, them first. Yeah, shame them <laughs> the entire episode. <laughs> Though Dinosaur is also a good beer. Um, <laughs> but that about wraps up Ran. 
for this week. Go see it if you get the chance. It's a very good movie. We did not do a commentary for this one because this is just one you should watch. And aside from it just not being a movie you can make too many jokes about, it's just something we wanted you guys, when you do watch it, if you do watch it, to just take it in and enjoy it. So go ahead and go enjoy this movie, or at the very least, just go enjoy the rest of your day. I'm one of your hosts, Thomas, as always. I'm Amber. And I'm Patrick. And we hope you enjoyed this episode, and we will see you guys next week.